Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. In the beginning of a last week's video, I talked about the potential health issues with oversweating caused by the excessive physical exercise in the summertime. I got mostly positive feedback, but it's worth mentioning an email from one of our community members who prefers to remain anonymous. In his email, he said he preferred to practice more during the summer so that he could sweat more than during other seasons. He asked me for scientific evidence of the benefit of sweating less through exercise during the summer. And he also pointed out that by drinking more water or as long as he would not be dehydrated, that would be fine. First of all, I would like to thank, thank the anonymous community member and uh, I appreciate his email and his willingness to share his experience with me. However, at the same time, I believe that we are talking about two different things. He believes that there will not be any health issues as long as you keep your body hydrated even though you are working on some physical intensive exercise in the summertime. Well, I said that over sweating in the summertime is not wise since according to TCM, our body may have some potential health issues and drinking enough water may not be a good solution. Also, I would like to point out another important point, which is that not everyone in their 20s or 30s. A lot of us are in our 40s or older. So, if I were to speak generally with regard to practitioners of all ages, I believe it's a good idea to balance physical exercise and the amount of sweating, given that this is general advice. Of course, there will always be exceptions based on physical conditions and, and geographic locations and so on. Even if you want to increase the amount of physical training and are okay with oversweating, I would still advise you not to train to the point of exhaustion every single day. This topic also reminded me of another experience. A while ago, a student of mine asked me about managing the quantity of each meal. Of course, there is a lot of information about this topic depending on your objectives. However, based on the TCM concept, the general principle is very simple. You should eat before you feel hungry and you should stop eating before feeling full. Again, keep a balance between eating too much and not eating enough. You can see that in ancient China, people did not have enough scientific evidence of a diet, nutrition, and so on. However, those principles or experiences make sense even today. Again, to answer anonymous community members' question about oversweating, I will say that a lot of TCM and the traditional concept often, if not always, are in line with modern scientific research and can provide complementary information and experience. So, if you cannot go into detailed scientific research to find the data and the conclusions for whatever reason, Following TCM and the concepts is a generally good approach for practitioners of all ages. And uh, those traditional principles are very easy to follow and just make sense. Furthermore, I would like to remind you that my lectures are based 
on my own experience with martial art, TCM, and related topics. They are not based on scientific research in nutrition or medicine since I'm neither a doctor nor a support scientist. Yes, I studied science and other disciplines, but I'm not a PhD in any scientific discipline. Maybe I should create a new PhD program in martial art. Instead, what I'm working on right now is to share my knowledge about Chinese internal practice, including both martial art, Xiu Dao, and other culture related topics. This is empirically derived knowledge. Yes, it may not seem too scientific, but then again, it is not my objective to be scientific when talking about topics related to culture. To give you an example, people often say someone is very beautiful, but nobody can say that she is scientifically proven beautiful because beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Anyway, let's move on to today's topic. Today, I'd like to introduce an interesting pair of terms, Kuai Man or fast and slow. Topic covered in today's video include first, Kuai and Man in Chinese philosophy, second, Kuai and Man in martial art, third, principles of Kuai and Man, four, demonstration, fifth, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Kuai Man in Chinese philosophy. Kuai Man or fast and slow is a pair of terms used to describe speed. Speed, of course, is related to time, which is a measure of uh, durations of uh, events. Throughout human history, the concept of uh, time has had a very significant impact on the understanding of the universe structure, which brings a lot of unresolved issues, both scientific and philosophical. I have mentioned in my prior video titled Tai Chi and Eight, Eight Gates Forces from Theory to Practice that in Chinese culture, Yu Zhou as a term is used to describe the term universe contemporarily. Nowadays, in China, when people encounter this term, they automatically think about the word universe. Actually, Yu and Zhou talk about two different concepts. The first character Yu means four directions or the concept of a space, while Zhou means time or endless time. Put together, Yu Zhou or universe actually means space and time. For today, let's zero in on the term Zhou or time. I have to say that in Chinese philosophy, the concept of time is not as developed as in Western philosophy. But at a practical level, ancient Chinese used the term Kuai and Man or fast and slow to describe the nature of time. Also, since Chinese philosophy about time is closely related to space or Yu, naturally, people believe that time just follows space and keeps moving forward. Since the yin and the yang concept has the dominant position in Chinese philosophy, the understanding of time is close to yin and yang. As a result, the concept of slow and fast is planned by applying the yin and the yang concept. Yin is used to describe the nature of time measure as fast. In other words, fast and slow are just comparatively measured to describe the time used for certain events during human movements. I have to say that such a unique way of understanding the concept of time in ancient China has had a strong and pervasive impact on its language, art, 
school of thought, and so on. It can be a big topic and I have done a lot of research on it in the past. I will talk more about it in the future. Like I mentioned, time has a philosophical construct can be very complicated. To simplify it, the ancient Chinese used yin and yang to categorize an object based on its relative speed. So, fast and slow are mutually dependent and more importantly, they, there is no ultimate way to define the importance of speed without a context. With that in mind, let's move on to the next topic. Topic 2. Kuai and Man in Martial Art To a certain extent, a martial art can be understood as the practice of uh, different movements in different directions, different levels of speed and force. Kuai and Man or fast and slow are used to describe speed. So, as a martial artist, you have to understand and master the practice of speed. Due to the complicated nature of martial art practice, I'd like to simplify the concept of speed by categorizing martial training into two categories, practice and application. Now, let's talk about each category. First, practice. The objective of any martial training is to gain specific skills. In other words, training methods are the means to the end goals of achieving skills. So, please do not confuse the training method with the skills themselves. Some styles, like Tai Chi, really focus on slow motion practice. But the slow movement is only a training method now the final skill meant to be used in self-defense. Any self-defense movement in application should be fast. No matter what style, well, slow movements are simply a part of the process of a practice, not the final effect. Of course, you may say the, this concept is very simple. But unfortunately, many people still misperceive that Tai Chi's slow movement can be used as it in self-defense situation directly, which is an unfortunate and embarrassing fact in our community. So, to be able to distinguish between the procedure and the purpose is the key to understanding slow motion practice. Second category, application. I have said that all of the movement in self-defense situations should be fast, or at least the moment your fist reaches the opponent's body, your movement should be fast, or else the power generated will not be sufficient since power needs force and speed. Since any skill achieved through slow motion practice cannot be used as is in self-defense situations. Two-person exercise or training the martial application aspect with the partner is important in gaining those skills. It is the process of internalization. I call this process internalization because of the objective of this procedure. The objective in any application is to convert the trained martial movement into a martial skill. Movement is only the medium of a skill, not the skill itself. In other words, without a two-person practice, a movement will simply remain a movement. Two-person practice will convert a movement into a skill, or at the very least, it can accelerate your progress in gaining specific skills through practice. To summarize, since any martial movements need to be fast in order to be useful in self-defense, Managing the speed of a martial movement is 
an unavoidable topic. You need to practice movements both slow and fast if you want to maximize the benefits of your martial art training. Topic 3. Principles of a Kuai and a Man There are many principles guiding the management of a speed of movements, but in the interest of time, I will only mention a few key ones in this video. Those are first, Kuai Man Xiang Jian or alternate slow and fast. Second, Man Er Bu Duan, Kuai Er Bu Luan or slow and steady, fast and clean. Third, Man Lian Kuai Yong, Yu Yong Bi Lian or practice slow, apply fast. Fourth, Jie Shou Pi Kuai, Da Shou Shun Shi or block fast, respond accordingly. And the fifth, Yi Kuai Da Man, or defeat slow with fast. First, Kuai Man Xiang Jian, alternate slow and fast. Different people have provided different explanations for this principle. For example, some people believe that some routines are designed to be practiced fast, while some other routines are designed to be practiced slow. Some other people believe that the speed should not be constant for all movements. Some movement in a routine can be fast, while other movements in the same routine can be slow. Well, I agree with both of these explanations. I prefer to explain this principle with reference to a single movement. The speed within one movement can be vary as well. For example, in a weeping force release process, the motion is comparatively much slower in the beginning but speeds up towards the end. On the other hand, the striking or penetrating force generally begins fast and then becoming even faster when it is about to make contact with the opponent. It is easy to see why that is the case. A weeping force takes a lot longer to accelerate compared to a penetrating force. Some Tai Chi styles really emphasize the evenness in speed during practice. But like I mentioned in the previous topic, said evenness in speed is only for training purposes, not for self-defense situation. So in the future, I hope you will alternate the speed not only between different routines or movements in a routine, but also alternate the speed in executing one movement. It requires a higher level of body control and practice. This is why it is important to understand the concept of Kuai Man Xiang Jian or alternating slow and fast. Second, Man Er Bu Duan, Kuai Er Bu Luan, or slow and steady, fast and clean. I introduced this concept in my prior video titled Decoding Martial Proverbs Series 8. If you have not watched it yet, I highly recommend you to pause this video and check out that video first. Link is in the description. Literally taking, it may seem like this proverb is only used to describe the practice standard about fast and slow movement. Actually, another layer of meaning of this proverb is that you should alternate the speed of movement. This alternation in speed is a clear standard since this proverb emphasizes the result of correct practice in managing the speed of movements. Third, Man Lian Kuai Yong, Yu Yong Bi Lian or Practice slow, apply fast. If you want to use any movement in an application, you have to practice it at full speed. This principle has been explained previously. Again, if you want to use any martial movement in a self-defense situation, 
you have to practice it at a fast speed, or else you will not only lack martial power, but more importantly, you will also be simply unable to defend yourself. Again, any specific martial skill requires the right physical training, or else it will be useless in combat. In other words, it won't be a martial skill at all. Fourth, 接手必快, 打手顺势, or block fast, respond accordingly. Before going any further, let me introduce two Chinese martial art terms. The first one is 接手, 接 means meet or connect, and 手 means hand. Put together, this term is used to describe a movement that intercepts or received an opponent's attack. 打手 has two meanings. In Tai Chi, 打手 usually means push hands, but it can also be translated to fighting hand or simply self-defense. Now, let's come back to the proverb again. The important part is the first half of this proverb. Not a single slow movement can be effective in blocking an incoming attack, unless you are fighting turtles. <laughs> Not the ninja turtle, just the ordinary turtles. If you are fighting ninja turtles, or more, like, more likely regular human beings, your movements need to at least be fast enough to block or evade their incoming attacks. Once the block or evasive maneuver is executed, you can adjust your movement accordingly. For instance, in Tai Chi practice, you can follow the opponent's speed in order to just control the opponent's movements. Fifth, 以快打慢 or defeat slow with fast. This may sound very simple, but I have to re-emphasize. In self-defense, speed is one of the key elements. It is very hard to win the combat without being able to release the force at full speed. In other words, martial art applications require high speed no matter what style you practice. Fast movements Instantaneous force release and the quick reflex are key objectives in martial training. Those were just some of the most important principles that will be useful to your practice. To summarize, you should alternate between slow and fast movement in practice since each of them will provide you with a specific benefit. At the end of the day, High-speed movement is the one that provides the final martial effect in self-defense. I will talk about this topic in more detail in the future. Now, let's look at a demonstration of a quiet man or slow and fast. Topic 4. Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate the Xing Yi Pi Quan Fa Jin exercise in alternating the speed of the movement. As a result, the fudging effect will be noticeable. Hello, I'd like to demonstrate the concept of the Kuai Man Xiang Jian or alternating fast and slow in a single movement. Let, let me take the Xing Yi Pi Quan Fajin exercise as an example for it. Okay, so when you practice the Pi Quan Fajin, you do not have to each time use the fast speed. You can sl start slow, then in the end, move, make the movement very fast. So like this. This is the method to have to gain the skill of inner force through Xing Yi Pi Quan Fa Jin. Topic five: Take aways. This video talked about a controlling speed in martial art trainings. First, traditionally, the yin and the yang concept has been used to explain fast and slow practice in the martial art community. Second, both fast and slow practice of movements are equally important. Third, 
There are many guiding principles to manage speed during practice and application. Some of the key ones are first, Kuai Man Xiang Jian or alternate slow and fast. Second, Man Er Bu Duan, Kuai Er Bu Luan or slow and steady, fast and clean. Third, Man Lian Kuai Yong, Yu Yong Bi Lian or practice slow, apply fast. First, Jie Shou Bi Kuai, Da Shou Shun Shi or block fast. Respond accordingly. Fifth, yi kuai da man. Or defeat slow with fast. Four, make sure to check out the demonstration section for a xing yi fajin exercise to get a visual representation of a kuai man xiang jian. That end today's video. Thanks for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice at different speed.